Yo, Lord willing, Jeff Canarsie, My Talk Radio, check it out. Yo, we stay quiet, like Russell Buffalino, when things will get ugly like Pessy's death in Casino. Who do we know? No one, nobody. But we're all well respected like Della Croce and Gotti. I know wild nights, a van and not turn. Light up a cigar and watch your spot burn. You'll get patty whacked, I'm tough like Irish dock workers. Run with guys, with guys, hooligans and black lurkers. Corner berserkers, street savvy soldiers. You owe, you better pay. Don't make me say I told you. Cold you don't betray, I say what I mean. Providence in Brooklyn all the way to the bean. I'd rather be unseen like Benny the Chin. I don't gotta go to Vegas to see cities of sin. Pull the pin, drop bombs like Danny Green I write homicide like the murder machine Lansky, Luciano, mastermind the racket Up in the clam house with a million in my jacket Move around when the streets get darker Pay homage to real bosses like Gambino and Patriarcha my- You're a good debater and you're not afraid of a fight So why have your comments off? Just out of curiosity Well, I've turned them on for a lot of things I know your shorts you do Right, and some of my lives I think they're on but almost as soon as I turned them on, there's photos of oh, my sense. family's homes. Okay. What's the address? Yeah. And at what point? And that, and then yeah. I just want to clarify. Yeah, please. I don't have to take that abuse. Agreed. Like I don't come to work and slap the dick out of their mouth. Yeah. Like, <laughs> kind of why do you have a disdain for informants in your opinion? I don't disdain them. I downright fucking hate them. That's okay. That's okay. But see, this is why I can say it. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, that guy yeah, just yeah, crazy. He's on yeah. medication. Hmm. I have a disdain for them because no man should ever go to prison on the words of another man, number yeah. one. Number two, in 90% of the cases you look at, the informant has done more vile and disturbing crap than those that are being accused. Uh, number three, I find it oxymoronic when a, uh, a man, Joey Merlino, because yeah. everybody knows who he is. Yeah goes in front of the judge, they can bring up everything he's ever been accused of, including murders and whatever else. Even though he's acquitted, it yeah. doesn't really matter because it's a character judgment. But yet in that same case, you can't turn that around and say, well, let's judge the rat. Judges don't allow that. Mm. So for me, it's like you're walking in, you're already behind the, the, the eight And ball. now it's time for Mob Talk Radio with your host, Jeff Canarsi. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Jeff Canorsi from Mob Talk Radio. It's been a while. Uh, just busy doing other stuff. Uh, anyway, today's story uh, is a big one. Uh, it's It's been relatively... This story goes back to 2021. But what's breaking sort of in the last couple hours and last few days uh, is very interesting to me. Uh, and it has to do with uh, Joe Biden's brother, Jim. Uh, who has long been considered, in in so many terms, uh, sort of a shyster, right? Now, my political beliefs aside, like I'm not going to get into the whole politics of it. So I'm sure those that are Trump supporters are going to love this, uh, and those that support Joe Biden are going to hate this. But it's as accurate as it gets. I'm sure it's going to get a little bit worse as time goes on. Uh but let me go ahead and uh, share something really quick. Uh, I would a hundred percent. I would definitely show you guys this indictment, but the indictment is sealed, uh, and and that's sort of a a big issue. Now, the original indictment, which was from twenty twenty one, you can go and see, but there have been added charges to this. Uh, and so right off the bat, you know, obviously the title is uh, alleged Colombo Consulier in cahoots with Jim Biden uh, in the original uh, indictment uh, paperwork, which I do. I do have the original charges. Uh, Thomas Faris is charged with other people and ninety three million dollars in health care fraud. 
And this is what organized crime is really doing these days. Okay. So Faris and Gatto are the, the, the two co-conspirators. There's a third one and a fourth one that have been added since, but uh, according to the FBI, they played key roles in a scheme to defraud health care benefit programs by offering and paying and soliciting and receiving kickbacks in bribes in exchange for doctor's orders for durable medical equipment, which is also known as DME, without regard to, for medical necessities, namely uh, orthopedic braces, right? So uh, you, you're talking about leg braces and stuff like that. So Faris, Gatto, and their co-conspirators had financial interests in multiple DME companies that paid kickbacks to suppliers of DME orders in exchange for DME orders. Uh, the suppliers, in turn, use telemedicine companies to obtain DME orders without regard to medical necessity. So in other words, they didn't need them. They're ordering them and they're getting kickbacks from them. So the DME companies who were owned by Faris and Gatto subsequently fraudulently billed Medicare TRICARE and CHAMP VA and other healthcare benefit programs for the DME orders. If you guys remember the Joey Merlino case and the Medicare fraud that they were alleged to have doing taking kickbacks for medical cream, it's so, sort of similar to that, but this is like on an epic scale, but unbelievably epic scale. Uh, the defendants concealed their ownerships of DME companies by using straw owners who were falsely reported to Medicare as the owners of those companies. Gatto also brokered kickback relationships whereby he received an illegal kickback each time specific medical devices suppliers provided DME orders to the DME companies controlled by him and his co-conspirators. Uh, Gatto and his conspirators then laundered the proceeds of that scheme through several layers of bank accounts under their control. Gatto and his co-conspirators entered into a related kickback scheme involving prescriptions for compounded medications. They agreed that the suppliers of the compounded medications would receive kickbacks in exchange for submitting the orders to pharmacies with whom Gatto and his co-conspirators, including Faris, had relationships with. Gatto also agreed with others that he would receive kickbacks from those pharmacies for compounded medication orders submitted by the suppliers. The compounding pharmacies then billed Medicare for the compounded medication orders. Uh, according to the allegations, the defendants caused losses to Medicare, TRICARE, and CHAMP VA of over $25 million. But really, this is about $93 million is where they're at. So, uh, a little background on Tom Mix Faris, okay? Uh, he's also known as known as Tom Mix, uh, and he first really makes headlines in Fort Lauderdale following a 1978 indictment for being the mastermind, allegedly, of a large marijuana smuggling and distribution operation over the cover of his Olympic shipping lines operation. He ran the scheme from 1974 through much of 1977 out of an office above the Old Bridge Restaurant at 3200 East Oakland Park Boulevard. And the case at the time was humongous because it included allegations of bribery against a pair of Fort's uh, former state representatives that arose out of conversations that were tape recorded by police who bugged Farisi's office. Organized Crime Task Force prosecutors convicted Farisi in 1980, and he would be sentenced to 30 years in prison, but would be released in 94. However, within months of that, the DEA... Uh, were still sort of watching Faris and, and looking into him. And the agents would actually pose as drug dealers who wanted to launder more than $1 million. Faris had hidden interests in a trio of strip clubs, Hialeah's Club Pink Pussycat, Goldfinger and Sunrise, and Club Diamonds in West Palm Beach. Agents said that for a fee, Faris would wash more than $1.1 million and reported drug money for them before his racketeering indictment in January of 96. Faris would later plead guilty and get 10 years plus six years special parole. I don't know what special parole is. Uh, he would be released from prison in 2005. Faris, he then would be arrested again in January of 2012, this time by FBI agents here in New York City, and the charge would be money laundering. That same day, Pat Trulia was arrested for the same offense in Florida. Meanwhile, uh, the Justice Department moved to revoke Farisi's parole because of the money money laundering violations. He would lock. He would be locked up again until September twenty one uh, twenty one of twenty twelve. And after a December twenty twelve trial in federal court here in Brooklyn, 
uh, Faris would be acquitted of those money laundering charges, but Trulia ends up getting convicted. Uh, at the time, the New York Daily News reported that the case was severely hobbled by the absence of two mob rats who secretly recorded the evidence but were kept off the witness stand. And what would be the reasoning for that? Well, probably because they weren't good witnesses. Uh, the FBI is willing, and we know this, the FBI has been willing for the last 30 years to put anybody on the stand as long as they can convict somebody unless those witnesses are complete jokes. And that's the only time they don't do it. Uh, but the reason why they did not use these witnesses, I have been able to find out. And it's not going to surprise any of you when I tell you this, that both two of the two of the informants in that case were committing crimes while under the FBI's watch. So while they were working as informants, they were committing more crimes. And that's why the feds did not use them as witnesses, because they would perjure themselves. Uh, and this has been one of the only cases I've seen in a long time where this sort of happened that way. Anyway, uh, what prosecutors are alleging now, and this just dropped in New Jersey, that a business associate of Jim Biden conspired uh, with, with uh, Faris and Gatto and others to defraud Medicare alongside an alleged leader of the Colombo crime family in a brief that was filed uh, Friday. OK, the government's accusation. Uh, is going to intensify the scrutiny of the ties between President Joe Biden's brother and his friend, Mississippi businessman Keaton Langston. OK, so keep that name in your head. Kingston, uh, Keaton Langston. It's a weird name. So the Justice Department has named Lang Langston as a co-conspirator in the ongoing fraud case uh, just three weeks after we had a congressional investigators who were grilling Jim Biden about his relationship with the Mississippi businessman. Uh, in the course of a previous prosecution, the Justice Department identified a defendant in the fraud case, Florida businessman Thomas Farisi, who we just talked about, as a high-ranking member, once consigliere of the Colombo crime family. Uh, Jim Biden, this is where he gets tied into this. He accompanied Langston the son of a longtime friend at a May 2017 meeting in which he pitched the services of Langston's medical lab testing business to a hospital chain. That hospital chain, AmeriCorps, has become the focus of the impeachment inquiry, excuse me, inquiry led by the House Republicans that is probing potential links between President Joe Biden and his relatives' business dealings. Obviously, everybody knows the stuff with Hunter Biden as well. This is another layer to it. Uh, through a spokesman for Jim Biden, Brian McDonough, he did not respond to a request for comment. So a lot of the press have been sort of hounding him, wanting to know more, and he's refusing to say anything. Uh, even though the government has identified Langston as a co-conspirator, he has not been named as a defendant in the case yet. He didn't. He also didn't respond for any requests uh, for comments to be made. Uh, Attorney Casey Langston Watt, who's a cousin of Langston's, who has represented Langston at times, said he was not in a position to comment and refused to make any further uh, statements without contacting the people in charge. Uh, the White House also was asked a lot of questions, and Joe Biden has refused to utter a word and says he never discusses his relatives' business dealings. Uh, however, investigators found, and this is the big thing, investigators found that Jim Biden leveraged his brother's name to promote AmeriCorps and that his involvement with the hospital chain began with the May 2017 meeting, which also included Langston's father, Joey. Uh, so what happened is investigators have actually obtained emails from Joey Langston to Jim Biden and Keaton Langston and others related to the planning of the partners' meetings for lab services uh, and businesses called Fountain Health. Uh, and so there was a, a statement that was delivered last month during the impeachment inquiry investigations, and Jim B Biden described a summer 2017 breakfast meeting in Florida with Keaton Langston, Joey Langston, and AmeriCorps CEO, in which he learned about America's AmeriCorps business model. But in his interview with the congressional investigators, Jim Biden would try to distance himself from Kingston Langston, and basically saying he didn't know him. He said he had no role in Fountain Health and was not involved in any companies with Keaton Langston. Uh, 
However, emails that were discovered prove otherwise. Jim Biden would testify at that hearing about his relationship with Joey Langston. He described the elder Langston, who was a disbarred trial lawyer who pleaded guilty in 2008 to conspiring to bribe a judge uh, as a close friend and fielded questions about their financial ties. So on one hand, you have him saying, I don't even know this guy. Now he's sort of then, you know, he's sort of caught because there's emails and then he sort of relents while being questioned and acknowledges, well, yeah, I, I, I sort of know him. And we see this a lot in politics. However, investigators have found out that Joey Langston, who sat for his own impeachment inquiry interview last month, testified that he loaned Jim Biden $800,000 and had only received $400,000 back. And this is according to the transcripts from that hearing. Uh, a lawyer for Jim Biden, Paul Fishman, told investigators at the time that those figures are not consistent with what we believe uh, actually transpired. Uh, following their initial contacts with AmeriCorps, both Keaton Langston, who's listed as the sole member of Fountain Health LLC and Mississippi's corporate registry, and Jim Biden went to work with that company, uh, which at its height operated a handful of hospitals across the eastern half of the United States. Uh, Jim Biden, in fact, helped AmeriCorps gain regulatory approval to acquire a hospital in Pennsylvania and work to raise money for it from overseas investors. So that's a big thing. On one hand, he doesn't know any of these people, never met any of these people, but yet he's using his brother, President Joe Biden, uh, and his reputation. I mean, the fact that your brother's the president of the United States is going to enable you to bypass certain regulatory sort, sort of things. And that's what's happening here. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Fountain Health and a successor company with similar name performed lab testing services for AmeriCorps, AmeriCorps hospitals. Uh, but in late 2019, AmeriCorps went bankrupt, leaving political and legal controversies in its wake. In early 2020, the FBI raided the Pennsylvania hospital is part of a Medicare fraud investigation that is completely separate from the New Jersey case. So there are more charges coming. So here we are two years later with the original indictment with Faris and Gatto and everybody else. But a business partner of King, King Keaton Langston, uh, Daniel, a guy by the name of Daniel Hurt, would plead guilty to his role in the Pennsylvania fraud case as part of the scheme, Hurt received kickbacks from the hospital, which in turn received millions of dollars in fraudulent reimbursements from the government, according to the charging indictment. Keaton Langston has not been named as a defendant in the Pennsylvania case, but AmeriCorps bankruptcy trustee accused him in a civil complaint of conspiring to hurt, or excuse me, is com conspiring with Hurt to defraud Medicare along with the same Pennsylvania hospital. Keaton Langston denied any wrongdoing and the case settled out of court, which means somebody paid money. On March 14th, uh, four day, five days uh, ago, prosecutors uh, are pursuing the New Jersey fraud case. They filed a brief that identified Keaton Langston as a co-conspirator, one in alleged schemes involving compound pharmaceuticals and medical braces. The indictment also states that co-conspirator one received kickbacks for his role in arranging orders made to a medical equipment company owned by Thomas Farise, the alleged former or current consigliere of the Colombo crime family and another alleged co-conspirator Pat Trulia, which insulted, resulted in improper reimbursements from the government. Faris is named as a defendant in that case and is pleaded not guilty. Trulia pleaded guilty to his role in the medical brace fraud of 2021 and according to the government brief in 2021 charging documents. So he pled guilty to all of that. So the Justice Department, like I just told you, identified Faris as the consigliere of the Colombo crime family, one of the original five families of the New York Mafia. Uh, in the course of a previous money laundering case in the Eastern District of New York, federal prosecutor, prosecutors also identified Trulia as an associate of the Colombo crime family in 2014 in a sentencing letter. Now, while Jim Biden has not been charged in uh, anything yet, I just think where there's smoke, there's fire. Uh, like I said, my political leanings really don't matter at the end of the day, but this is a big deal. 
This is a huge deal because these guys would not have been able to bypass the regulatory. I hate to say regulatory commission, but they would not have been able to surpass that and get around that if it's not for Jim Biden using his brother Joe's name as a workaround. Uh, depending on what you want to believe, depending on what side of the political aisle you lie on, uh, with Hunter Biden and the Russia and the money coming from Russia, this should surprise nobody. Uh, I'm not a Joe Biden supporter by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm also not a Donald Trump supporter. I'm I'm sort of in the middle of all that. But I do think what was interesting about this case is, once again, you have certifiable proof that somebody related to the president is up to no good. His son and all of those things that are going on, now his brother. Uh, and the correlation with working with organized crime is absolutely insane. It's absolutely fucking insane to me. So I don't know how much uh, further this is really going to go, uh, whether or not they're going to try to indict Biden or not. Uh, but the fact that he lied under oath about how he knew these people and the emails are coming out now uh, is, is a big problem for Joe Biden. It's going to be a big pro problem for him. Uh, and Faris is, is a well-known guy down in Florida. Uh, and I don't see how this is going to go well uh, for a lot of people. Now, here's one little tidbit I wanted to drop because I find it to be incredibly interesting. For those of you that know, uh, Ron DeSantis' wife, her name is Casey. And I don't know if you guys knew this, but uh, Casey, uh, her uncle uh, is was Antonio Caponegro from South Philadelphia. And that's something. Ron DeSantis' wife, Casey, her uncle was Antonio Caponegro. Strange world, right? And obviously, you guys know the South Philly story about Antonio Caponegro uh, and Angelo Bruno. Uh, Megan Kelly, also related to South Philly gangsters. A lot of people in politics that are related to some hardcore people. Uh, so you can do the research on your own for all of that. Uh, in the meantime, uh, not sure when we're going to do another live. It's probably going to be a while, guys, because I'm working on some other projects. But I thought you guys would find this interesting. If you're a Trump supporter, this is news to your ears. If you're a Joe Biden supporter, this is just another headline. But the difference is, is that this is real. This this is not like BS. And I love the picture on here of uh, Jim Biden dressing like Vito Genovese. Isn't that something? Anyway, that's going to be it. We have some stuff coming out on Jimmy Coonan uh, and some other guys like that. So for the next couple of weeks, you're probably just going to see videos like this. Uh, in any event, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, for those that listen to the podcast, we will be back on Friday. Uh, back on the podcast, we're covering a lot, covering a lot of different stuff over there. In the meantime, uh, enjoy, and uh, we will see everybody soon.